Hello, my name is Tamara Goldbogen, and I am with the Arts Learning Collaborative, where we support high quality arts learning experiences at Weber State University and across the state of Utah. In this video, Erin Roundy is gonna walk you through some easy steps for completing a visual arts project. You can check out our website at weber.edu slash artslearning, where you can find more videos like these and other resources to help you bring the arts into your classroom. Please feel free to share this with your friends and colleagues. Welcome. Our lesson today is titled Kinetic Art. The objective of this lesson is to explore movement and balance in a three-dimensional sculpture with the final product being something like this, an origami Utah bird mobile. Let's get started with part two of our origami project. Don't forget to watch part one before moving on to this video. Welcome back. Now that you have all your bird forms made, we need to put together the framework in which our birds will hang from. I first want to point out though, that I have made 15 birds in total, five burrowing owls, five broad-tailed hummingbirds, and five sandhill cranes. I'm not quite sure if this is how many I'm going to need. It may be too many, it may be not enough, but I feel like this is a good foundation for me to use in building my mobile. There are many ways you can make or find something to use as the framework. For our mobile, we are going to use two wooden dowels and yarn. I'm gonna show you how to assemble them together to create this particular framework in which our origami birds will hang from. Again, you are welcome to create any type of framework that you would like or use any kind of materials that you would like to create your framework. But you do need to make sure that it can support the actual weight of the objects hanging from it and also that it can hang from above. So let's grab our supplies. You'll need to get your two wooden dowels, a pair of scissors, and your yarn. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to take the two wooden dowels and secure them so that they don't move while we're doing the weaving part around to create this really pretty decorative top to our framework. What we need to do is create kind of a ball around so that they don't move. That will then allow us to be able to do this portion of it. So this part is more difficult, but once you get it um, done, then this part goes pretty smoothly. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna tie a knot with the yarn. So pick one of your wooden dowels. I like to wrap around just a couple times. You see that? And then I tie a double knot. And I like to make sure that throughout this whole um, weaving and putting this framework together, you wanna make sure that your yarn stays tight together, that you don't have gaps where it's exposing the wooden dowel. So make sure you can squeeze your yarn together too, if you need to. So here I'm going to do a double knot. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and just clip off the extra yarn that I have. Now that you have wound some yarn around the wooden dowel and tied a double knot, you're going to place it on top of the second dowel. Try to do your best to center both dowels. Um, you do have the ability uh, to shift things around as you're working, but if you can start with things mainly and mostly in the center, it will help you in the long run. And now what you're going to do is you're gonna take the yarn and you're gonna first start by going underneath and wrapping around diagonally. So I'm gonna, I came down and up and I'm gonna wrap around diagonally, pulling your yarn taunt as you go. So I'm gonna come around, maybe go around five times. Doesn't need to be super exact. You can see my dowels have kind of shifted, so they're creating more of this skinnier X shape. I can fix that. Again, this is the harder part to keep everything in its place because these two wooden dowels don't naturally lay on top of each other real well. Coming back, I'm gonna get it so I have more of this open T shape. I'm going to come back down and then I'm gonna come over to this area 
and start the diagonal the opposite direction. So I'm gonna come, I'm going to wrap around diagonally, pulling my yarn taut as I go. I'm gonna wrap maybe five times. And then when I come here, I am going to now go back over where I began by coming this direction. So you're basically just alternating. And if it helps for you to move the dowel like this as you're working to get the yarn around, go ahead and do that. But the more yarn that you add as you're doing this pulling taunt, you'll find the tighter that the two dowels become because they are being closed in by this ball of yarn and they don't move as much. So now I'm going to come and I'm gonna start wrapping around. I do try to keep things even in terms of wrapping. So I've started out by wrapping around five times. I'm just gonna keep doing that each time I change directions. You can continue to wrap and create this center ball of yarn as much as you want, but you don't wanna to go too crazy because you don't want necessarily this huge knob. And you also need to make sure that you have enough yarn to complete the weaving part, as well as using the yarn to hang your origami bird shapes from the actual framework. If you notice that you're not exactly centered, like I said, you do have some flexibility here into shifting things. And before you start doing the weaving part, I would get your dowels where you want them to be. So you can just easily slide. I know it's kind of hard to see that I slid it there, but I felt like I had too much wooden dowel up here versus here. So I just gently and carefully just kind of slid the dowel down so that it's more even. So I'm gonna just wrap this just a few more times before I start doing the weaving portion of our framework. When you get to the point that you're happy that your wooden dowels are not moving all over the place, this is the time that we start with the weaving aspect. With the weaving part, to keep a consistent pattern, let me show you again my example. You can see that the intervals between my yarn is pretty consistent. That is because I maintained a certain number of times that I wound my yarn around the dowel before I moved on to the next dowel. Wrapped around a certain number of times, then moved. And I kept that same pattern of the same kind of wraps versus pulling it to the next dowel. So that's why I have this consistency that you see here. You can mix it up. You can wrap as many times as you want, but what I'm going to show you is that I wrap my yarn around four times before I go to the next dowel. Wrap around four times, move to the next dowel. Four times, next dowel. And I kept that consistent throughout until I was getting to the end right here, because you can see my interval of yarn is a little bit longer here. This is the top side of my framework. If I flip it over, you can see the back side, which could be used as the top part as well. It just depends on what you, how you want to put your mobile together. You can see the consistency of the yarn, and you can see that it's really tight and pulled in, so I don't have any gaps where I'm seeing the wooden dowel. That keeps this really nice, tight, and structured. Here's my center ball that keeps my two dowels from moving all over the place. So I wanted just to show you this. So again, it is up to you how many times you want to wrap before you move to the next dowel. For me, I'm going to wrap four times and move. All right, getting back to the two dowels that I'm working together to assemble. I am now going to start with my weaving because I feel like I have them secured together really well. So with my yarn here on the top, I'm going to go to the closest dowel to me and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna wrap around four times. So that was one, two, three, four. I have little teeny gaps here where you can see the wooden dowel. I can just cinch those down to keep them tight. 
I'm going to come up on that fourth time and then I'm going to move to the next dowel. It's easy if you can rotate the dowels every time you go to the next one. It's just easier to work your yarn and for you to wrap things around. So here I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to cinch that down, keeping it very nice and taut right there. With my yarn up high, I'm going to come to the next dowel, rotating. One, two, three, four. Squish that down. As you're doing this weaving part, this will also help reinforce the structure and make it really nice, tight, and solid. I'm gonna rotate my dowel and I'm gonna come over to this one. One, two, three, four. Squishing it down, rotate, come here. You will notice that every time I move to the next dowel, my yarn is on top. I could do it where my yarn is on the bottom. The main thing is, is you wanna keep it consistent when you place your yarn, if you're keeping it on top or the bottom, so that you get that beautiful, even look at the end. So I'm going to continue rotating my dowels around, wrapping my yarn four times before I move to the next dowel. I'm trying not to layer my yarn on top of yarn that's already been laid down. I'm trying to just keep moving across the wooden dowel. So I'm not trying to wrap on top. I'm just trying to kind of follow in a line as I'm moving across the dowel. If you notice that you're getting little gaps along the way, just take a second just to cinch those up. This is a pretty forgiving structure. I like it because it's very beautiful in the end, but it also, you can work along the way that you don't have to start from the beginning. And if you accidentally wrap too many times, that's okay. It's not gonna throw everything off. You can use any kind of yarn. I'm using kind of a thinner yarn here. You can use thicker. You can use embroidery floss. You can use ribbon, twine. It's really up to you. I like this kind of variegated yarn because it gives us beautiful pattern in color as you're working along. But you can just use solid pieces or you can come in with maybe starting with a solid color and then tying it off and then bringing in another. I mean, there's again, lots of options for you on how you wanna create this framework. You'll continue to do this until you pretty much get to the end of the dowel. And you can decide if you wanna go to the very end or not. In my example here, you'll notice that I left some of the wooden dowel exposed on all four sides. I did that for a couple reasons. I did it for aesthetic reasons. I like that little exposure of the natural wood in comparison to all the busyness and the tightness of the yarn. I also like the fact that I didn't want to get too close to the end when I had to tie it off because I didn't want to have the chance that maybe my knot would slip off and then the thing would unravel. So that is why I left about, let's say an inch, inch and a quarter roughly of exposed. It's up to you. I'm gonna continue with my example here. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing again where I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white, uh, wooden dowel exposed. So here we go.
All right. Well, I'm getting to the end. Again, I said I wanted to leave a little bit of the wooden dowel exposed. And so I'm going to stop here at this point right here. You need your pair of scissors and you want to clip off your yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail so you can work with. Tying this can be a little tricky um, as you are you don't really have the other another end to tie on. So how I like to do this is that I like to take, so here is, I cut myself kind of a nice tail. I like to kind of pinch it. So I create this kind of loop and take this on the other side. So I have this loop here, drag the rest of the tail over here. And then just like a pair of, tennis shoes or any kind of knot, then I can come, pull really tight there. And I'm doing it actually a little bit on top of the yarn and do a double knot. And that makes it easy to end your weaving part of your framework. And then just take your scissors and just clip off. I do like to leave a little bit extra. Um, I don't like to cut right to the base of the knot. So just in case I need to kind of tighten that in. So here you can see I have finished my framework with my weaving. Here's the top. Here's the bottom. Again, if you prefer this to be your top, you can definitely use this and the other side be the bottom. So now that you have your framework, um, we do need to um, get our origami pieces, our keep our yarn out, keep our scissors out and get the whole punch. And now we're going to start stringing our origami shapes onto our framework. Also, don't forget your pony beads. The pony beads are actually for more of a decorative um, element as well as helping you create a sense of actual balance. With a mobile, because it's a kinetic form of artwork, meaning that there's going to be motion, you want to make sure that as you're hanging your shapes from the framework here, that it's not lopsided. Uh, you need to keep it so that your wooden dowel framework stays stationary and straight rather than tipping and leaning to one side because air currents and hands will be moving your origami pieces there's going to be movement but if it's stationary you want it to stay even and so those plastic pony beads um, are something that can help with weight and also with balance so again the pony beads are decorative and you can use them for a variety of um, patterns um, and repeat colors and, and things like that and add to it, but it's also to help keep um, your mobile balanced when it is stationary. Now that we've finished building our framework, in the next video, we'll assemble all the elements together to create our kinetic mobile.